Now, we are going to be combining all the properties that we have discussed in the section thus far. Isn't that exciting? So, we will be using the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. Okay, so this one, like we've been doing, okay, we are going to be expanding the log into several logs. We're starting out with one, and we want to see multiple logs. Okay, we are not solving the log, we're just expanding it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to count all the pieces in my division symbol, and that will tell me how many logs I'm going to have. So in the numerator, I have one, two, three pieces, and in the denominator, I have a single piece. So that's a total of four different things going on. So I'm going to need four logarithms, which I'll kind of show what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing out my four logarithms since I have four components within my fraction. I don't know what they're separated with yet. I don't know if they're separated with addition or subtraction, so I'm just going to leave them alone for now. I have one more log. Okay, and all my logs are going to have the same base. They're all going to have a base of two. Okay, so whenever we use these rules, they must have the same base. So all my logs, as you can see, will have a base of two. So including the last one. Sorry, I know it's hard for you guys to see the last one. Okay, so we're going to start with the numerator, which in the numerator, these are all secretly just multiplying. Anything that's written side by side is secretly multiplying. So remember, when we have anything in the numerator of a fraction and they are multiplying, we are going to be using the product property, which means we can split each of these up into their own logarithm and put addition signs in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to start by writing each of these in their own log. So I'm going to write a 5, an x to the 4th, and a z. That's my z. I put a line through it so you can tell it's a z and not a 2. All right, and since this is the product property, we are going to separate these first two logs with a plus sign. Okay, so we've gotten the numerator taken care of. That is done, so the numerator is done. Okay, so now the denominator. Okay, we put it in its own log, so I'm going to write it in the last log. Ah. Okay, and since this is dividing now, we are going to be subtracting the final piece. All right, so we have separated using the quotient property and product property, which both pieces are done. Now the final step is to be on the lookout for any power property. So if you see any exponents, we're going to move them to the front of our log. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my logs again. Okay, my first one looks good to go. I don't have any exponents, so that's going to remain the same. So I'm just going to write out all of them real quickly. Set it up. Okay, so my first one, and again, I'm just going to go ahead and write in all my bases because I already know all my bases are going to be a 2. All right, that first number is set. Okay, it's 5. It doesn't have an exponent, so I'm just going to leave it as 5. Okay, my next one, it does have an exponent, so we are going to be shifting that exponent to the front of the logarithm. So the 4 is going to go in front of the log, and my x will just stay inside of the log. Okay, my next log doesn't have any exponents, so it's going to remain as z. Alright, and then my final log, which you guys can't really see it, but it does have an exponent. That y to the 3rd is an issue. So we're going to move that 3 to the front of the logarithm. So it'll be minus 3. My 3 will go in the front. And then my y is going to remain in the log. And that would be my final answer, you guys. So we have log base 2 of 5 plus 4 log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of z minus 3 log 2 of y. And that would be it for that one. All right, now the second part is the same idea. So if you think you understood part A, part B is very similar. So first step, we have to figure out how many logarithms we're going to write. Okay, so I'm going to count all the pieces within my fraction to determine that. So I have a 2, an r squared, a p to the 7th, and a q. That is four separate things that are going on. So that means I'm going to have four logarithms. Okay, let's get going. So I'm not going to write what the symbols are yet.
Okay, so I'm gonna put, let's focus on the numerator first. Okay, now, if you notice, we don't have a base. So secretly, the base is a 10. Okay, which if you wanna write 10 for all the bases, if that helps, you can, but remember, we don't have to write base 10. So I'm gonna leave it off just so we start getting the hang of not seeing it. Okay, so let's focus on the numerator. So we have two times r squared times p to the seventh. So I'm multiplying things together, which means we are using the product property. So I'm gonna put each of these pieces in their own log first. I'm gonna put the two, then the r squared, and then the p to the seventh. And since we are multiplying, remember the product property says, if we put multiplication and we put each piece into their own log, that's the same as adding. Look at that. All right, so my numerator is taken care of. Now I'm moving on to the denominator, which since we're dividing, we are now using the quotient property, which states if you divide, you separate the logs with a subtraction symbol. So we will be subtracting our final value, which is a Q. So that will be the last number to go inside of my log. All right, so the last step is to deal with any power rules you see. So if you spot any exponents, we're gonna move those bad boys to the front of the log. Okay, so I'm gonna go up and go ahead and set up my logs. So I'll be ready to go. Okay, so my first log has a two. It does not have any exponents other than a one technically, but we don't need to move one to the front. Okay, so my first one's just a two. Now my second number has a squared as an exponent, so I will be shifting that bad boy to the front of my logarithm. So my two will move to the front and my r is gonna stay inside the log. Same with this one. We have this exponent right there to the seventh power. So we're gonna shift that to the front of the log. So my seven will now be in front of the log. Okay, and the p will be inside of the log. And then finally, my last number doesn't have an exponent. So guess what? We don't have to touch it at all. I'm just gonna leave it as minus log of nine. And that's it, you guys. That would be my final answer. So it'd be log base two, I'm sorry, log of two, technically the base is 10, sorry. Log of two plus two log of r plus seven log of p minus log of nine. Ta-da!